I'm Jerry Palazzolo, founder and president of Catholic Healthcare International, and welcome to another discussion of responding to the call of Padre Pio. Each week, I will take a few moments of reflection and share with you some thoughts about Padre Pio, his amazing home for the relief of suffering hospital over in San Giovanni Rotondo, Italy, and our collaboration with them to replicate that as a model of fully faithful Catholic healthcare delivery in the United States. On behalf of our Catholic Healthcare International and CASA USA team, happy Easter and Paschal blessings to our family of supporters around the world, or as Padre Pio would say, Bona Pasqua. Alleluia, he is indeed risen. We just completed Holy Week where we reflected intensely on the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus allows us to share in his suffering, and it's a blessing indeed, albeit a great mystery which we do not understand. Through his resurrection, though, Christ opened the gates of heaven, and now we are able to share with him in his resurrection also. Our patron, St. Padre Pio, gives very vivid testimony to this reality, this awesome mystery, yet a, re a reality indeed. On September 20th, 1918, he received the visible stigmata of Jesus, the wounds of Jesus on his hands, his feet, and in his side. This lasted 50 years for Padre Pio. Now he is present in so many miraculous ways today. He is alive and well in heaven and in the world today through many of his devotees, through the over 3,000 Padre Pio prayer groups around the world, through the work of the Casa over in Italy, through our work as we work to replicate that here in the United States, his home for the relief of suffering, and also in the so many miracles that he works in people's lives around the world today. These are awkward times for Christians everywhere, but particularly for Catholics. For us, the tomb is empty, but we cannot see the resurrected Lord. We're used to walking into our churches and sharing in the Mass, participating and receiving the real presence of Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity, which is the strength, the source of our life. Be assured, the tomb is empty, and Christ indeed is present. He is resurrected in our lives. You know, it's interesting these times. Uh, Monsignor James Shea gave a reflection, a Good Friday uh, retreat reflection for the Napa Institute uh, this past Good Friday. And he, he indicated that these are not unprecedented times at all. Plagues and famines and natural disasters and wars have interrupted society and the way of life, just like we're going through right now many, many times throughout history and frankly in almost every generation since the time of Christ. God permits these things to happen because they give us a great hunger for him when we cannot go into church and participate in our uh, our masses and the sacraments and receive him. It gives us a great hunger for him. I'm convinced that that's what's happening right now. Those of us who cannot receive him really, really want to, and we miss that. And just imagine what it's going to be like the first time we're able to go back and receive him again. It will be awesome. In the meantime, pray for those who do not believe, especially those in our families. Father Tim Nelson, one of our board members, gave a reflection this past Holy Week, and he mentioned a staggering statistic. Less than 30% of all Catholics truly believe that Jesus is present in the Eucharist. And because of that, less than 30% of all Catholics go to Mass every Sunday. Why would you go to Mass if you don't believe that Jesus is truly there? That is a tragedy. Pray for these people. Pray that they believe and pray that they will come back and join, that God will break through and give them the wisdom to come and participate fully in the mysteries that he provides, and especially for those in our family. 
We're an Easter people. We do believe Christ is risen and that he is present in the Eucharist. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. This is the reason for our optimism, our passion, and the power behind everything that we do. And that leads me back to our beautiful calling and our CASA USA vision and the programs we continue to implement even in these this nationwide uh, shutdown, and we move forward very expeditiously. We're making great progress. God's amazing in what he accomplishes in times of apparent crisis. That's where he flourishes, and that's where he is most greatly glorified. So I want to share with you our programs, which continue to grow and move forward with great momentum, even as we speak. First, prayer. Prayer is the most important foundation of every successful work, and particularly every work of God. Our International Eucharistic Adoration Program is growing very, very well. We now have over 150 people signed up to pray for an hour each week in front of the Eucharist around the world in multiple countries and multiple continents. If you are not already a part of it, please go to our website, join up, become an, a, an adoration warrior, and encourage your friends to join up anywhere around the world. We need to fill that up for every hour of the week. Our Eucharist, our St. Pio Eucharistic Adoration Chapel is coming along very well. Bishop Earl Boyer donated land for our, our uh, Casa USA campus. And on that, we will build this adoration chapel. It will be a replica of the original monastery chapel that was there in San Giovanni Rotundo when Padre Pio arrived in 1916. And a wonderful architect, Mary Swanson of Swanson Design Studios in Lansing, has donated her services. She has already sketched out a floor plan and site plans for the land and is now uh, putting together sketches and renderings of the exterior and interior of the chapel. When those are complete, we are planning on having a live stream event to unveil those sometime probably in mid-May. So please stay tuned for that. And also, relative to prayer, we have now three new prayer groups in the Diocese of Lansing. One in Jackson, Michigan, one in Howell, Michigan, and one in Brighton, Michigan. We are working uh, very, very uh uh, expeditiously on our Terry Scheibel Home for the Brain Injured. Uh, we had a wonderful Terry's Day event on March 31st, which was the anniversary of her passing 15 years ago. And we are working on a collaboration uh, with a world-class rehabilitation facility to develop a safe haven in her name for the most vulnerable. We are working on our School for the Relief of Suffering Faithful Catholic Medical School in the charism of Padre Pio to form physicians and ancillary providers to practice as faithful Catholic providers in a very secular society and culture of death that we live in. We are developing a Santa Maria della Grazia pilgrim shrine. We are uh, working on also ultimately the replica of St. Pio's Casa, Home for the Relief of Suffering Hospital. Ultimately, we will replicate the Casa uh, campus from San Giovanni Rotundo, Italy, here in the Diocese of Lansing, and even more programs than that. We already have two wonderful donors who have given us the foundational uh, down payment for the Adoration Chapel and for the Terry Scheibel Home for the Brain Injured, and we're working hard to uh, in a campaign to raise the funds for the rest of the program. So many exciting things happening, even as the world appears to be shut down. Please don't forget about us. Pray for us. Join our adoration program. Support us financially. Watch for our weekly email updates. If you're not already receiving them, go to our website and sign up for them. Have your friends sign up. Watch for our website for updates uh, in general, keep an eye out for the rescheduling this summer of our combined Terry's Day event and Padre Pio's birthday event in Michigan. It will be a big celebration. And mark your calendars for September 23rd, the Feast of St. Padre Pio. We will have another big event on that day to celebrate all of the things that we're working on. 
Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. Have a blessed Easter week. Until next week, God bless you and your loved ones. Thank you.